On this episode of China Uncensored, can you hug your children with nuclear arms? Kim Jong-un is certainly going to try. China is exploding over U.S. weapons sales to Taiwan. And what do a mistress, a spy master, and a Chinese billionaire have in common? I'm not sure, but it sounds like a party. This is China Uncensored. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. For all my fellow Americans out there, I hope you all had a wonderful Independence Day. And a special shout out as well to all my friends in the UK. We couldn't have done it without you. This 4th of July was special, not just because of this sick American flag cake Shelly made, but because this year's celebrations were made in China, as is apparently every 4th of July these days. 93% of fireworks used in the United States are made in China, according to a 2013 report by the American Pyrotechnics Association, which then immediately caught on fire. That's almost $300 million in fireworks last year, which makes sense because after all, China invented fireworks in the seventh century. But Chinese manufacturing has taken things to a whole new level. In China, there's a town that makes the world's jeans, a town that makes Christmas, even a village that makes Van Gogh's. And most of the world's fireworks are made here in Liling, Hunan province. It's one of the most dangerous industries in China. Poor safety standards often lead to disasters, like this explosion in 2014 that killed 13 people and injured dozens more. The good news though is that industries in China are beefing up their safety standards. Like for example, when electronics maker Foxconn installed suicide nets. But I don't mean to grill China, because you're probably already doing that yourself. According to Consumer Reports, most gas grills are made in China. And this 4th of July, Americans spent $5.3 million on American flags made in China. But America didn't pay for everything this 4th of July. Some things were gifts, like this, an intercontinental ballistic missile launched by our friends in North Korea. Rotund North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said it was a gift to American bastards. Well, that was very thoughtful of him, but unfortunately, America already has an ICBM. Actually, 450 of them. Oh, wow, I totally didn't have any of these. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, South Korea responded to the missile launch with this video simulating how they could strike back at North Korea. For example, say North Korea were a star on a giant rock. They could totally blow it up. China, on the other hand, is not having much luck with explosive projectiles. This is the Long March 5, China's most powerful rocket. They launched it on July 2nd. And completely not living up to its name, it failed soon after takeoff. Seiran Media said the failure was caused by an anomaly, but was vague on details. I'm going to guess the anomaly was it turned into a giant fireball. Don't worry, it was unmanned. But the failure throws into question many of the space plans China has proposed for the coming months, including an unmanned trip to the moon scheduled for November. Maybe they can just go halfway and come back. Speaking of Independence Day, on July 1st, Hong Kong celebrated the 20th anniversary of its own liberation from Great Britain with a fun-filled military parade led by their Chinese overlords. This woman says she feels a lot safer knowing that the People's Liberation Army is here to enforce Hong Kong's liberation. I'd feel safer too, with eight to 10,000 PLA troops on the ground ready for action. By the way, you know that Sino-British joint declaration that established the one country, two systems policy? The one that allows Hong Kong to keep freedoms impossible in mainland China? Well, on June 30th, my favorite Chinese spokesman, Liu Kang, had this to say. The Sino-British Joint Declaration, as a historical document, no longer has any practical significance. Just like how the Chinese constitution, which guarantees freedom of speech and religion, also has no practical significance. In other news, the U.S. sailed a Navy destroyer through the South China Sea. China is calling it a provocative act, to which President Trump responded, destroyer? I hardly know her. This is the second freedom of navigation exercise completed under Trump's administration, this time by the USS Stetham, 
to which President Trump responded, Stethem damn near killed him. The Defense Department said the exercise was to challenge the territorial claims of China, Vietnam, and Taiwan, to which President Trump responded, Taiwan, I want, okay, we're done with that joke. And finally, a Chinese company has dropped its plans to create genetically engineered miniature pigs. I didn't know they had plans to make them in the first place, but I guess it's a brave new world. A company called BGI had announced plans to alter the DNA of Bama pigs to make them in custom sizes and colors. That was followed by objections from animal rights groups, which pointed out that pigs should only come in custom sizes and colors after they're dead. So it looks like next year, we'll all have to load up on some non-GMO pork on our Chinese-made gas grills and watch Chinese-made fireworks as we celebrate America's birthday. Which reminds me, Shelly, I'm going to need some more of that flag cake. We'll be right back. So what size and color pig would you want? Now maybe that's the kind of merchandise we should sell on our website. Speaking of the website, if you go to ChinaUncensored.tv, you can watch our all-new full-length episodes. Each episode has segments we won't be putting on YouTube until next week. You can also watch full-length episodes on the China Uncensored app for Apple TV, Fire TV, and Roku. So click the link to go to ChinaUncensored.tv.